All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Matthew, and today I wanted to share a quick and dirty analysis of the Sentinel-1 agent. Uh, I'm not actually real good with uh, reverse engineering, so I had a more empirical approach. I wanted to check about configuration storage, access control, and the communication uh, from the agent to the console. Uh, I focused this analysis on the with Windows agent. There are some differences uh, between the Windows and Linux versions, but uh, most of all will be applicable to the Linux agent uh, as well. So if we first look at the configuration folders, we can see uh, that there are two of them. The first one is in program files. It's called config. It holds uh, mainly generic configuration about the, the, about the agent, such as uh, its uh, console, its URL, uh, such as the features that would be enabled in the agent. And the second folder is in program data. It's called uh, assets. And it holds, um, it holds what uh, the administrators of this particular instance um, had configured for the, for the agent. If we want to look inside these folders for the specific files, uh, we quickly see that most of them are encrypted. And there's a single one which is not, and it's called userconfig.json. If we look closer at the encryption system, we quickly notice that uh, there is a very similar content. There is a common prefix for each of these files. And one in two bytes uh, is actually the same. And because the first, uh, the previous uh, file I spoke about, userconfig.json, is actually JSON uh, encoded in UTF-16, we can guess that this is XOR encryption with the same key for each file. And by just comparing the different bytes, we can recover the key. The thing is, uh, the XOR key is actually encrypted, uh, hard coded into the Sentinel-1 agent. And it is the same for every customer uh, around the world. So by extracting this encryption key, we can access the actual contents. And what we were looking at, uh, what we were, we were looking for, was the um, uh, exclusions. Regarding access control on both folders, before November last year, uh, both folders were were accessible from unprivileged users, meaning with just SMB access, uh, you could read the exclusions for uh, the machines we are, we were uh, targeting. But from October 30, Sentinel-1 uh, restricted access to the assets folder, which means we cannot access exclusions anymore. So we had to find something else. Now we look at the communication system between the agent and the console. And um, in the configuration files, we noticed that there is a specific UID generated after agent re registrations. It is stored in uh, the config folder in agentuid.json. And because the config folder is the one that Sentinel-1 didn't uh, restrict, we can still access it uh, with unprivileged users. So any user in the system can access this folder. Which we retrieve the UID generated by the agent. And by contacting the console ourselves, we can retrieve again the exclusions. Then, uh, now that we have the exclusions, we wanted to go a bit deeper and see how we can play with them. So there are obviously many uh, vulnerable exclusions that are sometimes defined by administrators. But we wanted to see if there are like default exclusions or default behavior that could be exploited um, uh, to, to bypass the agents. So we noticed on the console, on the Sentinel-1 console, there are templates offered by uh, Sentinel-1, which is administration because you, because you don't have to manually define every exclusion for every piece of software in your information system. So for instance, you have templates for uh, the Qualys agent, for uh, Citrix agent, and for many other default or uh, common utilities. If we look at these templates, Sentinel-1 uses a uh, a particular uh, syntax, which is a device hard disk, vol hard disk volume with a wildcard at the end. And if we look at the documentation, it means this uh, syntax is disk ag agnostic, meaning uh, if the, the, the thing you want to exclude from the, the agent is on any disk, this notation will exclude this. Uh, but if we scroll down uh, a bit more and look for uh, the recommendation from Sentinel-1, we also see that this syntax is actually vulnerable because the wildcard will also match any backslash in exclusions. Um, so you, don't, you just have to recreate the, um, uh, the, the, the folders and their children at the, si at the right 
location. For instance, for Qualys, we see that uh, it wants to exclude program files, Qualys, and Qualys agents. So we just have to recreate uh, this, uh, this structure anywhere on the file system, such as in the user folders. And because the wildcard will match backslashes, uh, the agent will, ac will actually exclude any file uh, in this folder. Then we look at uh, agent regist registration, which is the first step when you actually install the EDR agent. On the console, there is what they call the side token, which is base64 encoded. And inside, it is a JSON document with the console URL and a specific token called uh, side key. But at first, we believed this must only be used during agent registra registration, so we shouldn't be able to retrieve it if we compromise an endpoint using Sentinel-1. But actually, by looking at the configuration, we indeed retrieve this parameter, this uh, parameter called side key. And it is therefore exposed on all endpoints where Sentinel-1 was installed. Because it is in the config folder in a file called userconfig.json, it is again accessible to all users on the file system without any privilege. This brings uh, new opportunities. The first one is obviously to register new agents uh, to trigger, for instance, fake alerts. Uh, in case the blue team is on your track, you can just register a new agent with the name of a machine uh, anywhere on the, file on the um, information system and trigger fake alerts to try to decoy activities. Uh, because you now have registered a new agent, you have uh, the possibility to download the configuration again from the console, so new way to access the exclusions. And the thing is, the side key cannot be revoked by administrators because it is linked to the container where you attach your Sentinel-1 endpoint in the console. So in order to uh, block attackers uh, that had access to the side key, the administrators have to migrate all agents to a new site to have a new uh, side key and uh, delete the older one. What about detection then? Um, unfortunately, Sentinel-1 doesn't provide any telemetry about file read access. Uh, so if you just read the configuration, extract the exclusion, uh, there is nothing displayed on the console. So we cannot detect uh, this kind of attacks. There is indeed a specific event log uh, for agent regist registration, but it is not on the same part of the console. And to our knowledge, uh, not many uh, defenders will actually integ integrate these kind of logs in their detection. So by the recommendation, even if there are uh, I think, defects in the Sentinel-1 implementation. There are many things we can do to protect ourselves. Uh, the first thing is to define exclusions from hashes or signature and not file paths on the file system. You can limit your exclusions to specific scope. Um, in Sentinel-1 on the console, you can create groups dedicated for uh, specific endpoints in case you want to apply exclusions only on them. You can obviously avoid using wildcard in pass exclusions, even if Sentinel-1 uh, templates uh, always use them. And you can also consider auditing the EDR, because at the end, it is uh, a piece of software like any, anything else. So it also uh, should uh, be audited to ensure its security. Thank you for, for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.